who's of over 1,000 plus employees, where he's going to tell us, builder of a positive alliances between communities and organizations, strategic organization and a change management, developing consumer-friendly data platforms uh, for organizations, uh, key successes in areas of uh, crisis management as far as his expertise, public speaking. He is an expert and a creator and a driver uh, of a diversity and uh, inclusion programs. What are his successes? He's managed um, one, that's 190 million budget, 192 million budget for programs and operations to prioritize services uh, for over 420,000 residents. Wow, where he's going to tell us? Initiate a new platform, a digital information and a dashboard allowing residents to receive real time data plus more. The list is just long and long and long. And so these are our guests. Uh, the Al Mediara Aradondo. Uh, he's going to be telling us who he is. Earlier on, you heard me talk about um, Ambrus Arroso, and uh, the head of this delegation is no other but Liberia's Inspector General in Gregory Coleman. I'd like to say my esteemed thanks and appreciation for picking this platform to come and tell us who I guess and uh, how important are, are the presence here in our country, Liberia. We'd like to say good morning. Let's first of all start with you. Good, good, good morning to you. Good morning to the listeners out there. It is uh, an honor to be here today. And uh, just to uh, use this opportunity again to keep our people informed of the activities of the Liberian National Police. We promise accountability and transparency in our work and we have decided that we will continue to work towards professionalizing uh, the police service and bringing service alive by what we do. We are committed to ensuring that our intervention does no harm, it does not prolong or escalate our intervention into any matter, and that we strengthen our relationships with the community to uh, a point beyond resiliency to the point of anti-fragility, where uh, we can withstand shocks when things go wrong, as things will always go wrong, like in the last few cases we've had. But the uh, the, the, the strength with the relate with the uh, community that uh, we continue to to foster, uh, meant to um, ensure the maintenance of the peace when these things happen. So today in studio I have two very important people. I have Mr. Ambrose Ara Russell. He is the uh, executive director of the Inner Hero. The Inner Hero is a 501c3, a nonprofit organization based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, the Inner Hero, uh, among many things, most importantly to our being here, work with law enforcement as a community based organization that bridges the gap between a local community and law enforcement. And uh, Mr. Russell, uh, I had the opportunity to work uh, with him in uh, the state of Minnesota, advancing the cause of uh, community uh, uh, peace and security, uh, ensuring that uh, we uh, render assistance to law enforcement where there was a gap between the community and, and law enforcement. We came in through our intervention uh, using the youth as an entry point, uh, engaging uh, the youth, then bringing on the parents in and the whole community to get uh, confidence uh, uh, built, restoring trust and building legitimacy uh, with law enforcement. But that's just one of uh, what Inner Hero is involved with. They're involved with mentoring, uh, child development, have after school programs and a whole lot, I mean, just to support safe communities. Uh, Mr. Russell here uh, has been in this business for a while. He has great experience uh, in uh, this aspect of, of, of the work. And he's here as a Liberian just to give back, to share his... Oh, he's a Liberian? He is a Liberian. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, he looks like Liberian. Yeah, he is. <laughs> they were from Raya Kawe. He went from nowhere. I used to go. I used to go. From Kawe. Kawe. So, Mr. Russell is good to have you back. Next to Mr. Russell is Chief Medario Arigando, uh, an esteemed law enforce enforcement expert with uh, one of the uh, greatest battle tested and approved skills in crisis management. In recent history, one of the biggest law enforcement crises we've had, uh, 
it was the George Floyd incident. Oh, okay. Chief Arredondo served as the Minneapolis Chief of Police when that incident happened. Oh, wow. He is the first black Chief of Police for the Minneapolis Police Department. And the timing was just right for him to have been in that seat when that occurrence uh, uh, of George Floyd uh, uh, happened. And his leadership and uh, how he managed the crisis, I mean, was just exceptional. Uh, he ensured that justice prevailed. Uh, his department did the right things, they did things right, and uh, the officers were uh, faced, they faced the law, and uh, the, uh, the law did the rest. But uh, what is most important is the fact that it's a more complex and more challenging society than we will understand, and the role that he played the role he played in the crisis, I mean, I don't think the story has really been told as per the importance of his being there at that particular point in time and how it all played out that justice prevailed. Another chief who had been sitting in there and made completely different decisions around that situation. I believe that he has, he has not been actually healed for what he did, and he didn't do it to be healed. He did it as a professional, just ruling out his service like he's, did, he's done over the last 32 plus years. So uh, I'm not going to say <laughs> any, anything more. The chief is Is he very, still active in the service? No, no, he's retired. He retired, okay. And uh, he has a lot to offer, and that's why he's here, just to help poor Mama Liberia to see how we can achieve and just get better at our service. Okay, of course he's not a Liberian. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Well, we, 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 we're, we're checking. We're checking that. As part of his being here, uh, when he returns, we're going to ensure that he, he he goes through his ancestry DNA, so that we can find out where is Chief Arredondo actually from. It might just surprise us that he has a little bit of Liberia like, blood in him. Because when he when he landed here yesterday. He connected to the earth. He felt at home. He felt very, very welcome. So, Chief Rando, uh, welcome to Liberia. So, before you come in, we'd like to have you informed. This is a high-level uh, conversation. The IG of the Republic of Liberia, in Gregory Coleman, is our guest here. He brought in two persons from the U.S. and they're going to tell us why they are here, what are their activities. And first of all, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But it's great okay. having you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, tell us who you are in addition to what the IG mentioned. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Prime Radio, for having uh, me here today. Uh, I'm here, first and foremost, um, as a guest of the Honorable Inspector General Coleman. Um, I have known of the Inspector General for, uh, for many years now, and I will just say that even though um, uh, I'm across over in the diaspora, uh, as a major city chief, um, I watched uh, with real strict observance of the character of the Inspector General and obviously faced with some of the challenges that he has. Uh, and by the way, I should also note that uh, uh, the Twin Cities where I come from does actually have a pretty substantial uh, Liberian population. So, But watching uh, Inspector General Coleman lead uh, the Liberian National Police Services in the manner that he must do so, faced with obviously there's challenges. Every police organization um, whether it's Monrovia or Minneapolis, will have inherently challenges it. But he is trying to lead a pathway forward for the uh, Liberian National Police Services that is absolutely intrinsically involving his community. Uh, when Inspector General Coleman talks about the importance of relationships, when he talks about the importance of trust and accountability, I will tell you he means that. Um, I, I mentioned earlier I was part of the major city chiefs back in um, uh, the United States and that consists of the 50 largest cities in, in America. I will tell you the character, the leadership traits that Inspector uh, General Coleman has, um, he could run circles around half of those people. He is, he is a man of great character, a visionary, and, um, but he also needs support. And, and when I say support, the community needs to support him. So, so I'm here learning as much as I can. Uh, from the Inspector General, um, uh, you know he is a, a leader in his own right. So uh, whatever space he feels that I can help support him, I'm absolutely going to do that. And so he is really on a trajectory to really uplift 
and, and really make sure the uh, uh, Liberian National Police Services shine, and at the same time continue to build those important relationships with the Liberian people. So, um, uh, not oftentimes in the policing profession, you, you have uh, celebrity crushes. I got a crush on the inspector. <laughs> he's, 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 he's a great leader. He's a great leader. He's a great leader. He's, 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 doing, he's doing great things. So, so, even though you may not claim me as Liberian, I got a lot of respect here for the Inspector General Coleman. So, thank you. So, tell us about your professional experience. So, I, I've been, uh, as Inspector General Coleman mentioned, I've been part of uh, the uh, peace services, peace officers services for over 30 years. And in that time, I've worked uh, just about every assignment that you could imagine uh, within the organization, uh, eventually rising to the rank of chief. Um, in the 160-year history of my previous organization, um, I was honored and very humbled to be the first uh, uh, black police chief in that. Um, but I will say that more importantly, and I know that this is part of uh, Inspector General Coleman's DNA, it is the noble purpose of serving and giving back. That is one of the reasons why I've had so much of a respect for him. Um, he just truly, his DNA is about serving and making sure each and every day he shows up on the job. He leads in a way that exemplifies what good service should look like, and he puts others first before himself. And um, that is just a, it's, it's such an important, remarkable trait uh, for a leader. Since I retired, I've been doing consulting work. And uh, that consulting work uh, ranges everything from uh, leading during crisis. I've had my share of crises that I've had to, uh, to lead through. And, uh, and it's been both uh, leading organizations, government organizations, as well as private sector folks. So I, I do work with uh, private entrepreneurs. Uh, the one thing in common thread about leadership is when you look at some of those key traits and factors of what makes a good leader, it absolutely touches both government sector employees and private business folks. And so, um, again, I'm in this space. Uh, I absolutely have the utmost respect for Inspector General Coleman. Uh, I've had a chance also while I'm here to meet and speak with his leadership team. And, and I will tell you, again, if I was still doing my work, Inspector General Coleman, I would try to uh, secretly recruit some of your, your leadership team because you've got some great, <laughs> you've got some great people. So, so that's, that's what I'm doing now. Also working with Mr. Ambrose Russell uh, back in our state. I know that Inspector General Coleman uh, is a strong believer this year, too. Policing cannot do it alone. Uh, there's a saying back in the States that you cannot arrest your, yourself out of every situation socially. And so it requires working with uh, groups to intervene in terms of that public safety, public health. Uh, when people are homeless, uh, when people have addiction to substances, um, when people have depression, that, that is not something that no matter how good Inspector General Coleman's uh, officers are, that they can just wave a magic wand and solve that. It really requires organizations like the Inner Hero Organization to how do we address the root causes of that. Our societies over time, and I know it's the same with Inspector General Coleman, your communities here just expect, if I have to call somebody at 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning, we expect the police to show up. But if that's, they're not always going to be able to solve those problems. So I've had the opportunity to work with the Inner Heroes Organization to see how we can better address those root social problems. His name is Nadiara. Ah, and you can call me Rondo. Everyone calls me Rondo. Oh, Rondo. Rondo. Oh. Everyone calls me Rondo. Okay. So that's my Liberian nickname. Oh, oh that's <laughs> <a Liberian. laughs> okay, Rondo. Rondo, welcome again. Thank you. And so uh, much you heard his opening comments. Now, let's talk about what is it that you hope to achieve uh, for the time you're going to be here in Liberia. Well, first and foremost, I, I, I really want to um, lean in. Um, Inspector General Coleman's been so helpful with me in terms of allowing me a chance to learn about some of the different challenges here in Liberia uh, when it comes to not only the policing services, and again, many the size and scale might be a little bit different from some of the challenges he may be experiencing here back in the States, but there's some core similarities. You know, when, when Inspector General Coleman talks about morale, for example, every single major city chief back in the, the States, the United States, has that same issue. When Inspector General Coleman talks about the need to have adequate resources, staffing, that is a major similar issue back in the United States. When Inspector General Coleman talks about building his uh, uh, Liberian Police, uh, National Police Services so that they have a trust with the community, that is the same back over in the States. So I'm trying to learn as much, be a sponge as much as I can with the knowledge that I can learn from this uh, very great leader and, and then carve out where I can best as we define it more based on what the Inspector General um, asks of me, then I'll be here to help support him in that. You so. served several years in the, the police uh, in the U.S. 
uh, from low level positions to a top level positions. What is it that you can remember that you want to share with us? Officers monitoring this broadcast can learn from you as, as a single album trip. You know, that, you know, just listening to you, sharing experiences, you can say, well, uh, I know I listened to a show one time. There's a guy called Randall, mm -hmm. you know, he mentioned uh, during his turn in the police that he learned this. What were your difficult moments and what were your, your most memorable moments? That, that's, a great, that's a great question. So I'll, 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 do, I'll give you two um, examples. So what if, how many years did you spend? Uh, 32. 32? 32 years okay. of service. And you left last year or the year before? Uh, uh, it's been almost two years now. Okay. Almost two years now. Okay. Um, when I arrived here in Liberia, um, we were out and about traveling and at one point, uh, the car stops and uh, Inspector General Coleman gets out. And someone from the community walked up to him. Uh, they had an exchange of words, positive words, and the person thanked him. I could tell that Inspector General Coleman probably hadn't seen this person for years. But what that example shows to me is never underestimate the power of a moment. Clearly, that person had a fond respect for him, something, and it might have been something even years ago that the Inspector General himself might have just thought, I'm just doing my job. But for peace officers here in Liberia or back in the States, you have to make sure that every moment counts. And when so Inspector General talks about building those relationships one at a time, that mean, that has to mean something. Because people, you talk about some of your listeners may say, here's some they think about what Rondo said. Clearly, he has built a legacy of trying to lead in a way that, that really uplift his organization, but also the people of Liberia. So that's 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 one thing. In terms of the uh, challenges, um, I, clearly um, the events of May 25th, 2020 back in the United States and the, the death of Mr. George Floyd, um, I didn't know then that it was going to trigger not only a national but international mm -hmm. response, but it did. And it was, uh, it was unprecedented. Uh, there was certainly no playbook for it, um, and so that was that was certainly uh, the most uh, uh, the challenging. But I will also say, during some of those hard. So why was it challenging for you? Well, I will I will I will tell you right now why it was challenging. Um, some of your listeners uh, might be too young to remember an incident back in the summer of 1992 in the United States by a Los Angeles Police Department action, a, a, a gentleman, a black gentleman was stopped in a traffic stop called Rodney King. Can Some of your listeners- always get along. Yeah, yep, exactly. Inspector mm -hmm. General Coleman knows that. However, when that, it was a handheld video camera back in the day, uh, you know, the technology has changed, but that did not trigger nationwide protests. It did The world is much different. There was no social media, there was no TikTok, there was no Instagram, there was no Facebook. Um, the world was different. Fast forward to May 25th, 2020, Policing services, if something happens in one part of the world, it can now have an impact. Whether it happens in Monrovia, New York City, it, it's just the world has changed. It's a much smaller world today. And so um, when people amass, it's hundreds of thousands. I mean, there was protests literally from, from China to Australia um, to South Africa. There's all over. And so so it was, it was really... Um, it really changed the tide in terms of how we look at those incidents that uh, that shake the core of our, our institutions. Wow. <laughs> His name is... Uh, and at the center of it <laughs> yeah. was Chief Arredondo. Wow. So, Kevin, I know you're trying to pull a lot out, but uh, we're not going to allow you to pull out any more. <laughs> uh, Chief Rondo will be speaking uh, at the uh, Moruga City Hall. Uh, it's a ticketed event. Uh, we're, uh, we send out invites. Uh, and he's going to uh, give a detail, a more, more, more detailed okay. uh, explanation of uh, his, his uh, account of the situation. He will be showing footages that were have never ever seen. When is, it? When release, is the program? No, you, 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 now you're asking for an invitation. <laughs> so if you be a good boy here today, we we'll, we'll give you an invitation. It's on Thursday, it's six o'clock. Yeah. This Thursday. Yeah, this Thursday. Okay, six Thursday, six o'clock. I don't know. Wednesday, 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 Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, six o'clock. That's, that's tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Okay. And tomorrow, 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 tomorr
okay. will allow additional people in, 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 in the room. Okay, so let's go to Russell Andrews. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, again, we'd like to say welcome, and it's our pleasure to have you here for the first time in our studio. Thank you so much for Can having me. Thank you just Thank you to yeah. Prime FM for having me and uh, the Inspector General, mm -hmm. Chief Aradano, mm -hmm. Rondo, as he said. Mm -hmm. I'll call him Rondo, right. but he's my chief. Mm -hmm. And first of all, before I even say anything, I would like to appreciate my dear brother, Inspector General Cole. Thank you, sir. This man is one of the finest and the best Liberia I've ever seen. And in this life, I hope a lot of people tune into this uh, broadcast right now. It is the duty of every single Liberian here and abroad, the desperate, everywhere you will find yourself, anything you can do to support the work of Connor Coleman to make sure, because the leadership of this country, the next dispensation of the next generation, lies solely and hardly with what he's doing. He's a generational change leader. He's one of a kind. You don't find things like that easily, and the Liberian people should not take this for granted. I've had the opportunity to work with him very, very closely, and I've seen the heart very few people you find that love people beyond themselves, and he one of those. So the Liberian people should embrace and cherish what they have and make sure everything they can do to protect and guide and work with him, especially the plain close community. He needs everyone's help because public safety is also public health, public safety is also public education, public safety is also public work. It's just a change of command. So we say the police, after the plain clothes and the uniform community, because when you find both of them, for example, if someone commits crime and into the studio, the only way Inspector Cuomo and his manpower can come here to arrest, they will need your approval. So at that point in time, you have become a public civil servant. But your work is sector in a different form. So everybody joining him to work with him makes this thing a complete moving ship. So my plea and my time that he has invited me and my dear brother and my colleague Randall here is to ask the Liberian people to see what the good law has given them and support the mission, the vision. It's not going to be easy. It's not a microwave stuff. But it's a process. And that process, it takes time before you can see the success. But this is one of a kind of a leader. This is a shared question. How long the both of you will be here? Uh, I, will leave that. I will leave that way. It's better uh, they, they, they're, here, they're, here up, they, they're here up to the weekend. Yeah, oh. Up to the weekend. And, 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 and uh, let, let, me, let me just say this. This is a, uh, an honest appeal mm -hmm. to the general public. We have had our challenges in this country in so many different regards. And we continue to face these challenges. The uh, arrest agenda clearly spell out a rule for the rule of law, which make it a priority for this leadership. And by God's divine ordinance, I'm here, uh, second time around, serving in this capacity. Uh, no, no one gets nothing except it comes from above. I know the uh, challenges are very real. Everything is being politicized here. And even the best of intention will be scrutinized as a political intervention. Please, our work as law enforcement, we're separating politics from it completely. The actions that will be taken will be guided by the law and by the law only. And I understand how fragile the society is and how anything that is done. It's so easily misinterpreted, but I'm, I'm, I'm begging you, I'm asking you for your trust. Uh, we, we, we will make mistakes. Uh, we'll never ever sit and plan to intentionally make a mistake or go out there to do the wrong thing. But give us the benefit of the doubt, even when we make mistakes. We will continue to push professionalism in this service 
and we will be independent. We will be here as law enforcers and not as politicians. So everyone that's trying to drag the police into whatever political issues they have, please, let the people enjoy their protection. Let the people enjoy the police. This is the Liberian People's Police. There's no political party police. So please, we're asking for your trust. The officers, they face their own challenges on a daily basis. Uh, the issue of uh, psychosocial help, psychosocial help is, is, uh, is a need that we're reaching out for support. The issue of compassion fatigue with the officers, I mean, it, it, it's a real-time thing. And uh, we, 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 we are from the same society. We're a reflection of, uh, of the larger community. So as we work, to, to work towards building a safer community and reaching out to strengthen our families in so many different ways to support society even better, we are asking the public to please trust the Liberian National Police. We, we, we take action on our officers when they go wrong, when they do a good act or an act that's perceived to be a wrong act because somebody may not understand the workings of the police who have investigated, we will be accountable to the public. But uh, this is an honest appeal. Take politics out of our work. We're here to serve the people. Thank you. His name is Colonel Gregor Coleman. He's the IG of the Republic of Liberia, the Liberian National Police. Earlier on, you listened to the voices of uh, Medaria Ara Dondo Elias Rando. He is the strategic innovator and builder in social responsibility. You listen also to um, Ambrose Russell. Ambrose Russell is the, an executive director and professional uh, in uh, areas of um, positive image, community leadership. And, and several, several others. My name is Calvin Deming. We can have some interaction with the folks out with the folks in our studio. Um, whatever questions you have, it is specifically on what they've come to talk about. Whatever inquiries, whatever question in relation to what they are here for, we go to the lines. We hear from our callers. The lines are hot already. If you're outside of Liberia and you want to participate via the um, internet, you can call by dialing plus two three one triple seven. 4010 plus 231-777-404010 plus 231-777-404010 or you can call by dialing 0886-050507 for those of you with no, the no stats LMTM 07, uh, that's 0886-050507 or you can call us on our orange number and that's 0778 Four six zero seven nine three zero seven seven eight four six zero seven nine three are the numbers you can call us on and have your say. Let's hear from our first call on the line. We'll pick up eight calls. The most, not more than a minute, please. Good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Yes, sir. And good morning to our RG, Greg Kumo. Well, my name is Andrew Wilson and uh, serving the capacity of the director of Kapow. Well, RG, I want to commend you for the high level of work since you are doing over, you took over as a new director of police. It's a great transformation. But RG, I want to appeal to you in the public manner. Uh, RG, I need, I need more police person to help us, to help you guys. Because it is your responsibility. But in the day, we see most of the police officers are very much Papa. But I like most of the police are just free as we do our party. So I'm just appealing to you, you know, just saying that the guys come up and help to save my life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Much. And uh, Aji, I hope you're writing down those concerns because we just want to expose everything, everything first. first. Let's go to the international line. Uh, good morning. Your name? Good morning. Oh, sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Let's call it in the Good morning, are you there? Yeah. Good morning, are you there? Good morning. Good morning. Seems that this person is not on. Uh, maybe you can call back, please. Let's hear for the next call on the international line. Good morning. If it happens, it means that you didn't get the right connection. Good morning. No, it is not from here. Okay, so let's take the regular line right here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning, Kevin. 
Yes, sir. Quickly, please. Um, uh, uh, thank you. This is Joseph Blake, and good morning to the IG and his 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 panel. Um, let me say thank you guys in studio for the great um initiative um and the support you guys are giving to the IG. But quickly, I want to say this to the IG. I I, I noticed that um the the cry for public acceptance in 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 your speech is is kind of a a little bit worrying me. The reason why I'm saying this is because I think when the police starts doing the right things, like you started, obviously you have the public buying into you. I have been one person that had criticized the police in the past, and this time around, I'm, I'm, I'm crucified. This time around, I'm even avoiding violating the third lane. I used to do it, but because of the professional aspect of the police these days, I have put myself in line. So I think when the police live up to our expectation, obviously the people will, will rally around the police. So I just want to caution you that let our police officers, let, let your work reflect on them and let them do what is right, and we all support the police in good faith. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's Joseph Blake right there let's see so whether we can get back to the line uh good morning your name good morning yes sir your life your life good morning this is Kelvin that we are calling from texas um i'm an educator from texas Tech technical college okay. i want to say thank you to the corner i want to say thank you to our elders uh, our experienced uh, professionals that came up from the U.S. to support uh, the um, rehabilitations and the policing and protection in Liberia. Now, one of the colleagues, I don't know their names, but one of the colleagues spoke about collaborativeness with the community. Now, as an educator, our brothers are in the street, uh, they are doing drugs, uh, they are, you know, you know, different, you know, people participated in war and having a hard time. Look, we want to come into the country to educate. I'm a welding technology uh, material engineer. How can we connect ourselves with the, with the educational system in Liberia? Because we, we're trying to connect ourselves. We don't want to just leave the U.S. without our proper connections. And it seems like we are not getting the leeway since the government started and, and, and opened up. How can we be collaborative to be able to change our brothers and our sisters' mind technically to put them to work? Okay. Uh, on my own, I'm going to link up with you. I have your number. Um, somewhere today or tomorrow, I'm going to talk to see how we can elevate your concerns. Okay. Okay. Thank you, my brother. Okay, he calls in from Texas, the USA. Let's hear from uh, Irresistible Pony Junior. Good morning. Your name and where you... Uh, sorry. Where you call from? I'd like, like, like to start by appreciating Kelly. Kelly, a pleasant morning. Go ahead. And, and I want to thank you for bringing uh, such a distinguished guest. In, in our studio, I want to thank the IG, IG Como. You have brought two respectable figure, uh, Gary Alan, their profile is very much impressive. I want to thank you, Colonel Como, for bringing uh, our brothers up here to share their expertise and experience. Uh, Gary, the IG has the experience. He's the most suitable, the most appropriate person for this job. Uh, the Senate never doubt his ability. Even the Liberia people don't doubt his ability. But I have one question for IG Como. Come on, what is the most challenging, the most significant challenge within the Labrador National Police, ranging from uniform to welfare to salary to forensic lab to, to, to equipment to what is the most challenging aspect within the Labrador National Police? Thank you, and you have our support. Thank you, God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Pony. Let's hear from uh, the local line right here. Uh, for those of you outside, you can call by dialing plus 231 777 40 40 10. Okay, so let's pick this one from the MTM line. Uh, okay, so let's hear from uh, former representative Gabriel Yenka. Good morning. Good morning, Jerry. Yes, sir. How's the morning? Uh, He's listening. This is a very, this is a very quick one. Um, I'm sorry, Dave. The, uh, obviously, like 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 the police said, um, you 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 probably may have two or maximum three other people in Liberia who may be as qualified and as appropriate competent for the job as cooperative. So this is absolutely no question. It's not in doubt. It's not debated about his abilities, his experience, of the force. Uh, but, but, but like like the caller before, the police said. When the police is seen as 
doing its job professionally, impartially, there wouldn't be any need to sentimentalize um, uh, property. So one thing is, yes, of late, I know he's not the Justice Minister of late, in being uh, following up with some uh, corruption cases, it will appear in a public perspective that the arrest is simply restricted, confined, and targeted to uh, officials within the immediate past government. And, and that, that will throw some uh, aspersion on the public partiality and professionalism. What, what, what about uh, cases involving other people with our father? As of the days of um, Mandela Johnson shall leave, the okay. corruption test, Harry Greaves, you know, on his government, and so forth. The president took responsibility for being as a car. Can we just put in this thing and make it much more so that it doesn't give the collaboration of uh, partisanship? Okay. Even for the police. Thank you so much. Thank you, former lawmaker, Representative Gabriel Yinka. Let's hear from the international line. Good morning. Your name, where you call from? Good morning, Kelly. Yes, sir. Thank you, Kevin. This is Shelton Duo. I'm calling you from Virginia, United States, this morning. Go ahead, Shelton. Uh, let me say good morning to RJ and uh, the studio guests. So, Kevin, I listened to RJ and uh, the Liberian people, especially the guests, and one thing he said that I really want to appreciate him and also, you know, recommend to him when he said the police will be you know, politics free. At least, IG, please, as you say it, because over the period of time we have seen that the Liberian National Police, when it comes to everything that country is for about politics. But when our security personnel or our Liberian National Police is free from political activity, I think people will give confidence to make sure that the community works with police. But as you go about for me, I never you know, doubt that his ability because the level of leadership that we are seeing in life of uh, from my own father, William Moba, and all the people, they are all professional people. I believe that some of us that are here at the educated sector of America here, we pray that one of these days will come home and come contribute to our security setting too. So I would like to say thank you and uh, I pray that all your good work will come to fruition and your God will be politic free. Please. Okay. This as I said, you thank know, you. we are seeing it and we are seeing it. Please. I know you are professional and you are exhibited the level of professionalism just recently. That we are okay, Shelton, thank you. We have to. Thank you, and thank you for your work. Thank you, Shelton. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take um, this one, and then uh, can we just make this uh, this local call right here, and then, uh, yeah, thanks for wonder. Okay, then we'll take the last two after him or her. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, uh, Kevin Dunning, and good morning to the RG and the and the guys that is to and the, the listeners. I follow regularly on um, FM from Central Morovia. I'm um, testing on back to joining the conference. Uh, I just want to be very clear here this morning uh, that what they have said that the police will be uh, politics free. And if that is so, then they must begin to be very neutral. And that the public perception, public perception is bad. If the public believes and sees, that your actions and inactions are party driven, then you will see resistance. And then there is nothing they need to do again, they need to do more about community policy. From the community policy, then you will now actualize and realize your workings as police officers or security apparatuses in Liberia because there are criminality in the rural communities. Today, nowadays, people are unable to go home uh, eight. 9 and 10. So by 6 time we have around the world because there are ghettos all around these areas that are creating a serious embarrassment to our people. So I want to say that for me, I have that call to congregate the police for the okay. first month. No, we're not going to do that. We are still watching them until they can prove us wrong that they are not okay. uh, uh, partisan police. Okay. Until we can start to okay. uh, tell them the... Okay, test them only badly. Thank you. We take this one then. We take the last one and oversee... Uh, let's hear from Danisius Mater. Uh, good morning, Danisius. 
Good morning, Jerry, and thank you for the opportunity. Good morning to the IG and his uh, wonderful and uh, illustrious guest. Uh, Mr. IG, thank you so much for the work you've done. Just one concern that I want to raise. I know the show primarily is about uh, your guests and how best they can improve the professional name in Bolivar. Uh, thank you for the enforcement of the uh, motorcycle and the keke. But I noticed that there are more police present in the day at these uh, various checkpoints trying to enforce the ordinance. Then at night, at night is like it's free for all, and that's what the violation or the violators ring. I mean, what can the police do to ensure the people? I mean, typically it's not a society where people work at night, but. I mean, if, if there's a way you can create a shift, you know, so that up to midnight, people in the police get in the field. But, I mean, it can be terrible at night. Just, okay. The enforcement is mostly in the day and at night is terrible. All right, thank you, Danishas Mate. The final one is from a, a, a law enforcement officer. He works for PG County there in the US of A. We'd like to say good morning. You clear, Can you introduce yourself? Good morning, Kevin. Uh, good morning to uh, Chief uh, Koma and the uh, uh, visiting chief from uh, Minnesota. This is Afro Johnson, um, PG County Sergeant with Prince George County Police Department, Maryland. I just want to say, first of all, thanks to the uh, guests for the opportunity. It's always a uh, Wonderful opportunity to have somebody with wealth of experience coming to speak to people who need the every support and every bit of experience or understanding that uh, they need that is needed to do the job. Like the chief said, I think there are so the, the difference there's not much difference in terms of challenges law enforcement bodies face across the, uh, the across the globe, uh, from America to Australia to Liberia. There's a winning team with law enforcement officers when it comes to motivation for officers, when it comes to officer morale, when it comes to recruitment and retention, when it comes to officer self and wellness, community policing, those are, those, are, those are common things with law enforcement officers and bodies across the, 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 the breadth of length of the world. So I, I think it's a good thing that the chief is bringing people with a needed understanding and experience. All I'm saying is that the the chief uh, should continue to do that and expand it to other librarian organizations because we do have an organization here called the Association of Librarian Law Enforcement Professionals in the United States, and that's uh, he, we didn't meet with the chief. Uh, it's it's only important that the chief expand the engagement with other people, not just with uh, a segment, but everywhere because the Library National Police needs the needed support. They really do. The Library National Police do need support and. Like the visiting chief said, uh, Chief Chief Coleman is demonstrating a leadership that really we have not really seen in a long time. And what we want that leadership now to be backed by a substance, you know, to be backed by substance. But when it comes to optics, it is very important that LMP do optically he is really doing well. We just want to ensure that the optics is supported by substance because at the end of the day, officers have to be trained in various use of forces various enforcement mechanisms so that they themselves can be informed of the rule of law that will enhance their approach towards the citizen and go to make sure that the Library National Police is delivering the services that Library people expect of them. So it's just uh, an acknowledgement of the Chief's effort and just to add my two cents to the contribution. Thanks so very much, Fred. Thanks, sorry, or else we wouldn't go. Uh, the call keeps coming and we have to go. These people can share these. Of course, you know, it's the IG and his guests here. They got other activities and so, uh, um, the IG, I know you have a play four uh, in front of you. I have one find. I have one concern, and uh, maybe I could just just slot it in. And um, before coming, uh, I had an opportunity to play host to Mark Jabate, an official of the Liberian government. He issued statement of threat, and uh, there are a lot of public concerns out there. I too am concerned about what initial conversation, especially at your level, that uh, you've initiated, because it looks as because he's a member of the government, he says whatever, even though he's apologized. Uh, there hasn't been any official statement or stance, especially from uh, the LNP in terms of calling him uh, in relation to what he said. Uh, thank you, Kevin, and uh, I'm, I'm happy you gave me the opportunity to address that. Okay. As I was walking in the studio, mm -hmm. I ran into Mark Javatel right, right at the door. He was arrested. Turned over to the officers and sent to Central immediately. When today? As I was walking in, just as soon as I ran into him, I arrested him right at the door. Oh wow! And uh, from the studio, he was. Uh, you say you were low. Can you just? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. 
Perfect. So, uh, as I was walking the studio, mm. I ran into Mark Jabatier, and he came over apologizing. He's sorry. He was just joking. I told him, I mean, explain it to the law. So I arrested him and turned him over to the, the uh, officers to take him straight to Central and turn him over to the CSD, have him charged and forwarded to court. And so folks, that's the breaking news. Mark Jabate has been arrested by the LNP. Go ahead, sir. Um, the, the thing about it, uh, let, me, let me, before I even start to address uh, these issues, I mean, President Borka has given each and every one of us an opportunity to serve the Liberian people. It's not a right, it's a privilege. We must all be very responsible in providing the needed support for, uh, for the trust that he has reposed in us and to drive the agenda for the uh, greater good of society and the improvement of the livelihood of the Liberian people. No one should stand on their uh, existing position as a right to infringe the law. Uh, this is uh, exemplary to the uh, statement that was made here today that the police will remain very, very neutral and impartial. Politics will not play a part. He's a minister of government. He will answer to the law. Okay. Uh, the, uh, back to the, uh, the, the questions. Uh, I think the, 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 the head of Kapau and Danishas, both of them uh, spoke to the same thing. The presence of uh, secure, more presence of, of police, during the day uh, for the uh, enforcement and uh, they see way fewer officers at night. That is true, uh, specifically to the enforcement exercise because the officers that are assigned there during the day, I mean, once they retire at evening, then the patrol, uh, which are not strategically placed to all of those areas, are, uh, are out in the street. But there is a need for increased patrol at night which uh, we've been limited due to, to uh, transportation and other issues, but with the new vehicles, as soon as we roll out the uh, patrol schedule, you will see an increase in, uh, in the street with patrol. However, it will surprise you to note that the deployment times that you see the officers more in the street, the stats are telling us that they are the highest crime time in uh, the country. It may not seem so to the ordinary eye, but uh, we're actually following the numbers. Uh, there are key areas that we're now focusing on because we've seen more crimes in those areas, but uh, the, the deployment time are the highest crimes, uh, crime uh, occurring time in the country right now. The, uh, the cry for public acceptance, as mentioned by, I think, Joseph Blake. <clears throat> yeah. I'm not, I'm not just begging, I mean, uh, the public just because I just want them to. There's the only the only thing that gave us legitimacy to act is the people that we serve. And the prolonged bad governance in this country, uh, which have caused people to come in conflict with police more and more, and the actions that police have to take have made the police very unpopular. And people do not even want to give us the benefit of the doubt that we can do better or we can even uh, be that service for good. So the appeal is, is, is meant to actually call and make that clarion call out there that, I mean, I know it's difficult, but let's, let's give it a try, let's test it out. And like he rightfully said, the more we improve our work, the more people will accept us. So the improvement is becoming visible the uh, substance is, is, is becoming evident by the day, uh, by our action I mean, and how we've been responsive to the people. So it's not just the call, it's the action and, uh, uh, that supports the call as well. And then Kevin, Kevin from Texas uh, spoke about the willingness to come in to help. Uh, right now, Liberia, Liberia need all the help that uh, it needs all the help it can, it can get in whichever area, not just law enforcement, but um, all of the best brains out there need to, one way or the other, not just get on the radio and talk, but actually share the commitment of Kevin and the willingness to come in to contribute something. It can't just be sitting down to criticize everything that goes wrong. 90% of the people who sit down, they only 
respond to things that happen. And that's their contribution. The contribution is just to criticize. I mean, it's, it's okay to criticize, but what do you, what's your contribution towards something sub substantive as for the development of this country? If we all took the same time we used to criticize just to do one good deed for this country to advance, whether it's to help a child in the educational sojourn or to share whatever knowledge you've gotten from out there, this place will, will actually be that place that we're looking for that we run out to, to find every time we leave this country. Uh, 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 Puni, uh, uh, well, Puni, Puni were, were well received. Uh, the thanks that we, we're receiving here today is not because Gregory Coleman has done anything on his own. All of the things, first and foremost, go to the President of the Republic of Liberia for selecting this leadership at this point in time to serve the Liberian people. We are grateful, we are humble, and we are willing and ready to serve. However, everything that we have accomplished has not just been by us. It's been on the back and the sweat of the officers, the blood, the sweat, and the effort of each and every law enforcement officer. And I don't say it lightly, these are not just words. When I mean blood, blood is being poured out almost every day. Officers get attacked, they, uh, they get wounded in so many different ways. They, they go out working way, way, way longer hours than any other civil servant in this country. 24 hours sometimes, I mean, based on the circumstances, 36 to 72 hours, no complaint. And they continue to do that. All of the successes, I mean, could never ever be achieved without the willingness and commitment of the LNP. And I think the, the, the willingness of the officers in the midst of all of the constraints and uh, is the most critical success factor. And I will tie straight into to, to the next question, uh, which had to do with uh, the uh, welfare of, the, of, of, the, of the, uh, the most significant challenge, which is the welfare of the officers. Regardless of everything there is, those men and women on a daily basis get up, sometimes don't even have the, 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 the assent to leave home, but they make it their duty to make sure they get there to serve everyone else. Uh, I know people will say, oh yeah, but if they take pay and stuff like that, but if we did the math and calculate, I mean, the payment and, and try to make sense of it and the uh, level of power and authority that has been given to them, I mean, you, 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 you have a, a, a second thought about how you think and feel about them. So I want to use this opportunity to say thank you to all of our hardworking officers out there. Uh, uh, Representative Yinkan spoke about the issue of uh, the uh, arrest being made. We, like I say, we are neutral. We are not. Uh, all of those investigations are not just police investigation. When the when when the time is right for police to provide the needed support, we come in and provide uh, the support that's needed. As 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 it, as it relates to the LMP, we've been uh, investigating cases. Uh, the, the neutrality is there. I mean, some of the cases yesterday that uh, the police were accused of wrongfully handling, we just uh, dug deeper into it. And we were like, well, I mean, yeah, you may have thought that, I mean, it wasn't handled properly, but uh, these are additional factors you know, surrounding it. This, and and it's, not, it's not that it's a different body. It's the same like the Red National Police, just under a different leadership that uh, we're now trying to ensure that uh, things are done the right way and that the right things are done. Uh, the uh, education, uh, the education rules, the community policing. I think uh, 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 this 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 leadership is working on changing the entire philosophy of uh, policing, moving from force to service, uh, using consensus building as our model. Uh, in the first few months, we were rebuked very, very highly when uh, people just expected us to come and just whip the motorcycles off the street and get the kekes off immediately. I mean, there was so much cry back and forth. But what did we do? We started the initiative of consensus building, making sure that we bring all of the stakeholders to the table. Look, this thing we're doing is a service to the people. We have to incorporate them, get their feedback to ensure that we improve the delivery of these services. Uh, things and times have changed. Policing yesterday cannot be policing today. 
the ultimate objective is to create a safe community and the police has a part to play in creating that safe community. However, there's a larger responsibility that still falls on the police that are not police related and it has to do with those basic infrastructure that support a community to be considered safe. Good schools, good hospitals, uh, electricity, water. So it's collaborative effort, and that's why we, we've signed this MOU with the city government of the the Ministry of Public Works, the Liberian Water and Sewer Corporation, and we work closely providing support to the Liberian Electricity Corporation. Because if these things are right, it reduces the burden of the police. Uh, most of the most of the, the crimes that are occurring occur in dark spaces. So if we can provide more support to LEC for LEC to be able to expand and cover some of these areas, it helps to increase the safety of those communities. Uh, I think Danisha's issues were, were addressed, and uh, the, uh, the the words of the uh, PD County officer is well noted. Uh, we will uh, continue our engagement. Uh, the, I'm in contact with, with their association as well. We're looking for help uh, from wherever we can get it. I believe that uh, the Association of Law Enforcement, uh, uh, the Library Association of Law Enforcement professionals in the U.S. has got the best wealth of knowledge that we can tap on. And when I say the best, is because one, they have training in every area of law enforcement. Number two, they understand the culture very, very well. So, I mean, if we if we ever find any resource that I mean that will support an initiative to bring external help, that's one group that we will definitely tap into first before we can look anywhere else. Uh, thanks to Chief Rondo for uh, willingly uh, uh, coming out here to support us. Uh, it, this this shows that his passion for service is never ending. And uh, just to, to choose Liberia as, as that place where he, for the first time, officially shares his uh, perspective of the entire incident, the, the, the last major law enforcement crisis, is an honor to Liberia. We want to say thanks to the President uh, of the Republic of Liberia, whose directive it was to connect with, with different chiefs who supported this initiative uh, to ensure that we are able to look for external help out there just to improve law enforcement services in this country. Uh, we, are, we are committed to the Liberian people. We are committed to advancing the rule of law through the, the rest agenda and ultimately creating a safe community for each and every one of us to grow in peace and harmony and that economic development will continue to boom and that we can live happily ever after. Thank you. Martin comments. Let's first of all start with uh, you and then we end up with him. Yeah. Thank you again for having us here, Prime Evan. Uh, I would like to say a big, big thank you to the entire group of the Prime Evan and the Liberian people, more especially to the IG. IG, we're here to support you. We achieve right now in a way that we can be of support. Can you just face the mic? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much again. And I'll pass it on to Chief Brown. Brad? Just want to thank the Liberian people. Obviously, Inspector General Coleman has adopted me as a Liberian son, so I'm feeling good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, uh, 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 thank you for having us. We, we've run into our next schedule. Fortunately, oh, okay. it's just one minute update. Oh, right okay. here at the